Hi, in this video I have the Lalela Wi-Fi UPS and I'm going to be demonstrating how to get started with this unit. This is what it looks like and at the back there are many connection points for your different devices. Now the purpose of this Wi-Fi UPS is actually to power up your router or your optical network box, your ONT box, so that when there's a power outage, you'll still be able to have internet connectivity during the power outage or the load shedding. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through all these connections step by step. Right, the first connection is the input, which ranges from 100 to 240 volts. So that means it's suitable for many countries. And what I do is I'm gonna plug in the supplied AC power cord and I plug it in over there. And now I can connect this side to my mains. So I've now plugged in the unit and on the front there are some LEDs and a power button. Now according to the user manual it says that I must allow it to charge for 24 hours before using it. So I have let this charge overnight and it is fully charged. You can tell the battery charge level by looking at these LEDs on the front. 25%, 50, 75, 100. So at the moment this is fully charged. You might not be able to see it clearly so I've just darkened the lights in the lab here and there we can see there are green LEDs shining here so I'm fully charged. Right, now that I've plugged in the AC power cord there's an LED that is now on over here the AC LEDs on. Right, I've darkened the exposure a bit, but uh, I don't know if you can see it. The AC LED is on, there's a little green LED there, and the battery capacity is on full. Now, in order to power up the device, I need to press the power button for two to three seconds, and then what will happen is the output LED will come on, and then I know that the unit is powered up. Right, so before you get started, make sure it is plugged in, the AC LED is on, the output LED over here is also on, so it'll be green, green, and then your battery capacity should be at the maximum 100%. Right, the LED over here, which is for battery mode, is off. And the reason why it's off is because it's plugged in. If the power went offline or it was unplugged, so now there's a red LED that is lit here, which means that the unit is running off the internal lithium battery. So what would happen now is if I plug in my external devices, slowly the battery capacity would reduce and these lights would go off one by one as I deplete the internal battery, right? So I'm plugging it back in and the battery mode LED is off, telling me that I'm running off the AC, right? So that is how we get the unit up and running. Now starting with these outputs over here, these are the DC jacks or the DC barrel connectors that look like this. So what I need to do is look at the voltage over here. This one says 5 volts, 2.5 amps, it's this one over here, which is also shared with this USB output, which I will show just now. So I have a 5 volt output over here using the barrel connector, I then have a 9 volt 2.5 amp output and then I have a 12 volt 2 amp output and the reason for that is different routers require different voltages. So over here I've brought four different routers just to show you the variety in voltage that is required for each one of these devices. Now let's have a look at this one first. Scanning the back of the unit I can see that there is the power point where I would plug in my AC adapter. And right over there tells me I need to plug in a 9 volt supply and it will use up to 0.85 amps. Right, I've got this older D-Link router and just scanning the back I can see there is the input and it says 12 volts in and I can already see that this will work on 12 volts but notice there's a difference in the size of that socket. If I compare these side by side, you can see that this router is using a bigger barrel connector and this socket over here is smaller, it wants a smaller barrel connector. So under normal circumstances, I would take my AC adapter and plug it into my router and then my router would be fed from the mains. But because of the power outages, the load shedding, I'm now gonna connect the router directly to the Lalela Wi-Fi UPS. Now this is where all these connectors and fly leads come in handy. Let's start with the barrel connector to barrel connector. I call it a fly lead because there's one side and there's one side and it's just a plug and a plug. So I'm going to plug this in to the router. 
I first start on the router side. I see if this fits. Now in this case, the barrel connector fits directly into the router. I don't need any adapter. I've checked at the back here and it says nine volts. I can now take the other side of the fly lead and select the correct voltage on the back of the Wi-Fi UPS. Now recall that the router that I'm using is a nine volt router. It doesn't matter if the current is higher the router will only take the amount of current that it needs. This 2.5 amps is just telling me that I can feed a router or ONT box up to 2.5 amps. So I'm covered here because the router that I'm feeding is less than one amps and this is 2.5 amps. So I'm not overloading my little UPS. So I can plug this directly into the back here. Now this is already turned on. It is in the battery mode. So this means that the output is on at the moment, which means that my router should be powering up. Right, so this is the layout um, going from my UPS to my router. Right, so my router is actually on. It, the LEDs are here in the front, but it's quite dim. So I'm going to plug in another router just for demonstration purposes. Right, I'm not going to plug in this router. Now on this router, it has a smaller barrel connector. So all I need to do is match it to the ones that are supplied. And in this case, it's the one with the red ring on it. So if I plug that in, I can just see, yes, that seems to fit. Right, using the additional DC link, I can now plug into this router by plugging in the barrel connector into the adapter, which now goes into this router. Now this router requires 12 volts as the input. So I'm now at the back of the Lalela UPS and there I found the 12 volt output and I can plug the other side of that fly lead in. Right, so the one lead is going to the one router over here and the other lead is going to this router over here, but using the adapter. There is the power indicator telling me that my router is in the on position. Right, in this case, I've got the UPS and two routers. However, what happens if both routers want the 12 volt output? Remember that this one wants a nine volt and this one wants a 12 volt. So I'm going to disconnect this one over here and I'm going to swap it now with a router that requires a 12 volt output. So over here, there's the socket and just checking the voltage that's required, 12 volts up to one amp. So now I need to connect a 12 volt input over here. Now, since I'm not going to be using the nine volt output, I unplug it from the UPS. And as stated before, I first plug in the router, then I go and plug it in on the Lalela UPS. So I've plugged in the router, it wants 12 volts. And now I come here to the back and there's only one port. Now the solution to that is as follows. In the box, they've supplied this one connector to two connectors. This adapter cable allows me to go from this one 12 volt output and now I can connect my two 12 volt routers. There, I go from the UPS, 12 volts out. This is now connected in parallel. So I've got 12 volts there and 12 volts there. And the one goes to the one router and the one goes to the other router. And there you can see the green LEDs. And here on the bottom router, I've also got some activity here. Both routers are now functioning, running off the battery of the UPS. Now the nice thing is, once you've chosen your output and you've plugged in your router or your ONT box, you don't have to unplug it when the power comes on. You leave it plugged in all the time. So that means that this would also be plugged in all the time and that is what it would look like. That means that your router will be always on because even when there's load shedding or power outage, the unit will run off battery. When the power comes back on, it'll automatically run off main. That means you don't have to plug your router back in with the AC-DC adapter. You just need to have it plugged into this all the time going forward. Right at the back, there's a USB port over here rated at five volts, 2.5 amps. And over here, I've got my little USB port meter and I'm going to plug it in and I have a cell phone which I'm going to quickly test. So there is the output. Right, so the voltage is about 4.7 volts with a current of about 1.7 amps. My cell phone is now charging off this Lalela UPS. Now lastly we have the LAN and PoE ports. What this is for it's for routers that are powered via the Ethernet port. For example, here is an Ethernet cable and on some routers, they don't have these DC jacks. All they have is an ethernet port at the back and through the ethernet, it is also providing the DC supply. 
Now those routers often come with its own power supply. Now the problem is, is on the one side is mains and on the other side we have the LAN and WAN power over Ethernet port. So what this uh, UPS is trying to do is it's trying to give you that option that if your router is powered via the Ethernet port and doesn't have a DC jack, then you will use this over here. Now it also gives you a voltage selector and it says 15 or 24 volts. So over here, this is for a Huawei router. What I would normally do is plug in my Ethernet like that to the network. So that would go to the switch on the network and then I would need to feed the router with power and that would go in there. So this is what yours would probably look like. That would go to your switch and this would be going to your router, possibly even on your roof. So you're getting the power from this power supply which injects it onto some of the wires, usually pin seven and eight, on the ethernet cable. So what we need to do here with the Lalela is this side goes to the network so that would be the normal network side, that is why it says LAN. And this side is going to go to the router, the side that says PoE. Now very important is to select the correct voltage, in this case I'm going to select 15, then I can power up my router now using the UPS. Right, quickly having a look at the specifications of the unit, it can provide a max power of 25 watts. You can use the DC1 and the DC2 and the DC3 and the power of Ethernet all together as long as you do not exceed the 25 watts. How the unit works is it has overcurrent protection which means that if any one of these are shorted according to the manual it will cut out the unit. The unit will take about 5 seconds to restart and then reset that protection. Now the battery capacity is 13,400 milliamp hours and the unit is supposed to work as a UPS which means that when the power goes offline it will automatically run from its batteries and when the power comes back it will automatically be fed from mains. You should not have any interruption in the signal. I will test that and I'll also quickly test the short circuit protection. Right, at the moment the unit is plugged in. I am charging my cell phone. There is the output, about one amp. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug it. And there it is unplugged and there was no disturbance to the output, which means that my cell phone is still charging. The output was not disturbed. That means that if the router was connected here, the router would not have powered down because routers often take quite a long time before they power back up and resynchronize and the Wi-Fi goes on etc. So that's a good point. That means that you'll have no disturbance when the power goes off and when the power goes back on. Right, I'm not going to do a short circuit test. I'm going to short out this 5 volt terminal and then I'll short out the 12 volt terminal. So starting with the 5 volt terminal, it's connected to a cell phone, it's charging, it's over 1 amp and the voltage is uh, just about almost 5 volts. Now I have the output terminal here and I'm going to short it out. Right, I short it out and notice that the output is offline on the USB and when I remove the short, notice that the output is present again. So that short circuit protection is functioning correctly. Right, I'm now short circuiting the 12 volt output. I have the adapter connected. So the one side is going to this router. There are the LEDs. And on this terminal, I'm just going to short it out and then these LEDs here should be going off. Right, I'm just shorting out the output to test the overcurrent protection. Right, there we go. And the router has gone off. And when I remove the short, notice that the router is powered up again. The overcurrent protection is working perfectly. Right, I'm going to do a quick test to see if the voltage output here is accurate. So I'm going to first measure the 12 volts and I'm just measuring the voltage there. We're using my voltmeter and I'm getting 12.4 which is totally acceptable. And then on the 9 volt side I'm getting 9.15. Remember that once I plug in a load the voltage will drop a little bit when it is loaded. And on the 5 volt side I'm getting a voltage of 5.195, which is fine. If you do overload the unit or there's a short circuit, the manual says that the UPS will restart in five seconds to try and power up in the hope that that overload is gone. All right, so what do I think of the unit? Well, I like the fact that the DC outputs work well. I like that they provide different adapters for different types of routers. And also I like that they provided a splitter just in case you need to have two connections to the one output. The USB over here allows me to charge a cell phone, which is great and it works well. The power of Ethernet, the only problem is it says 15 volts and 24 volts and some units don't use either of those voltages. For example, this Huawei unit uses 19 volts and there's no 19 volt option here. 
Overall, I like the unit except for this part over here. I cannot see the LEDs very well and also this button. This type of button tends to break around the seam here. As you can see, you have to press the button quite firmly and my experience with this type of plastic is it tears around here and then dirt gets inside here. So my only recommendation would be to improve this over here so that we can see the LEDs more clearly and this button could be improved. The overall packaging of, on this side here looks a little bit cheap you can see how it's deformed uh, if I show you in the light but does it do the job yes it does it it does it have overcurrent protection yes and it works pretty well thanks for watching and cheers